Okay. Hello, everyone. My name is Patrick Ekenberg. I'm an applications engineer for uh, Wolfram Math Core, the developers of the software tool Wolfram System Modeler. And I'm here to, today to talk about some of the exciting new features that came in Mathematica 11.3, where we integrated part of the system modeling experience into the core Wolfram language. So uh, an outline will be as follow. I'll give some brief uh, motivation behind why you would want to do these kinds of system modeling. Then I'll go over what is actually new in Mathematica 11.3. And finally, we'll get into the meat of it all and we'll see how this actually works. Right, so to start off, what is system modeling and why would you want to use it? Uh, system Modeler, it's a standalone tool that allows you to model systems from, in essence, any kind of domain, including electrical, mechanical, and thermal domains with a dedicated graphical user interface. To kind of give you an idea where System Modeler can be applied, here I've listed some of the areas where System Modeler has previously been used to analyze, understand, and to design system. So, and we can get this broad coverage courtesy of our built-in multi-domain libraries. Now, System Modeler uh, and the System Modeler Model Center, which you see here in this screenshot, it's the origin of most of the models that I will be showing here today. And directly from the Wolfram language, if you have a copy of System Modeler installed, you can jump directly into uh, System Modeler uh, from the Wolfram language with this System Modeler command. So in uh, Leo, in uh, uh, in Leo of time, I will skip this today, but we have some great courses if you want to learn about how to uh, actually do the graphical modeling in uh, System Modeler itself. We have those up on the website called Wolfram U. So I recommend checking those out. Today, however, I'll go through more of the uh, interface between System Modeler and Wolfram language. But in essence, models in System Modeler, they are created using a drag and drop interface. You simply drag a component from the class browser here on the left, which includes all our built-in libraries, and you drop them onto the modeling diagram like this. And then you connect the different components up, and bam, then you have a model that you can simulate, that you can play around with, and that you can analyze. So in, in this talk today, I'll focus mostly on the models that have already been built and show you how you can analyze them. So um, in order to utilize this functionality, uh, you uh, most major platforms are supported. In fact, this has, uh, this has the same requirements as the uh, basic installation of a desktop full from language client such as uh, Mathematica or uh, Wolfram One. Uh, there's no support for cloud yet, but we're hoping to include that in the future. Th something that you will need, however, is a compiler because what happens when you um, when these models are built and you go on to simulate them they take all the mathematical equations behind it and compile it into highly efficient 
C code. And that is why a compiler is needed. If you run any uh, Wolfram language commands that require this compiler, however, uh, you'll get a uh, you'll get instructions for how to out, how to download it. And on Windows, we have some automated workflows that makes it so that you can download this with just a click of a button. Um, so some might be familiar with the system modeling packages that we had for uh, Wolfram language earlier. And this was the previous situation where we had a package called WSM link, which connected to uh, a standalone copy of system modeler, or if you had one on your desktop. Um, that was the previous situation. But what is new now in Mathematica 11.3 is that this functionality is natively built in. It, it means that you don't require this, uh, um, this external package to, um, to load in the, the interface for System Modeler. And more importantly, you don't even need a dedicated copy of system modeler on your system to to run this because now a um, the essential part of the system modeler engine is shipped together with uh, Mathematica and is available under your normal uh, Mathematica license. So everything that I am showing here today, you can try for yourself. Uh, without even having a copy of System Modeler. So let's start by looking over how this works. Now, System Modeling, it uh, introduces a new uh, first-class citizen of the Wolfram language, a new typeset object called the System Model. And to get a system model, what we do is we, in essence, just type in system model and then a name of a model that is loaded in the system modeler engine. Now you can load your own, uh, your own files to add more models into the engine, or you can reference one of the existing ones. And here I've gone ahead and found one that I want to analyze further. And I just uh, press enter and I get back a typeset representation of this object. And here I can see a bit more what this object contains. So in this case, it's a inverted pendulum that has um, some for here's the inverted pendulum. It has some outputs, the position of the pendulum, the phi, so that's the angle of the pendulum. It gets fed back into a into a linear quadratic controller, takes the angle, takes the position of the pendulum, and then it does some calculations and outputs an output that goes into a motor i'm not sure if you can see that but if i hover over it over uh, over the different components it will give a description of what they are so this this is a motor uh, which produces a torque and a angular velocity um, on uh, on a uh, on a gear that moves the pendulum back and forth. So in essence, what this controller is doing is it's trying to keep the, uh, the pendulum straight by, um, by moving the cart back and forth. But uh, I know this because I've, um, because I've uh, been looking at this model previously. So if you just got this model for the first time, what you might want to do is find out a bit more about the model. And there's lots of different properties that you can uh, get from a model. And 
And one of those is the summary property, which just provides you with a summary of the most important points uh, from the model. So you get a short description. It tells you that it's a controlled inverted pendulum system. Uh, it kind of gives you an idea of what the, if you can simulate the model, because not all models in the, uh, not all system models can be simulated. Some are just components in bigger models. It's, it tells you if you have uh, stored plots, which we'll get back uh, to later. It tells you the number of components that you have, uh, kind of which, uh, which domains this model has been built from. Now, an important point here is that I can either do like this and reference uh, the system model, uh, this, the full form of the name. I could also have, uh, I could also take this resulting object and do the summary property on that one. Um, alternatively, I could, uh, when I ask, ask for the system model, I could just ask for some information from the system model. So I could ask for the summary uh, from the system model. Um, something I forgot to mention is that there's lots of right uh, contextual actions that you can do on these. So if you want to find more model information, you could also just right click on the model and press show model information. Oops. Um, Right, but the summary property, it's just one of the many different computational properties that you can get back from these objects. We can list, get a full list of all the currently uh, supported properties by just asking for properties like you would with any other uh, Wolfram language type set object. So there's lots of different computational things uh, that you can get that you can get back uh, that you can get back from this. So, for example, if we want to know the um, the components in the model, what kind of components is it using? Then we could ask for that. And here you'll see the different uh, the different components from that are present in this model. And you'll actually, see if it's built from some of these components are built from uh, smaller, uh, they are models themselves, so they contain uh, components of their own. And here we can actually see that. So we could see here what the, what the electrical motor, in this case here, uh, what that one consists of. And all of this is computational, of course. So if you want to do some more uh, fancy logic, you can, you can do that automatically using scripting. Okay, but just right now we've only explored the object. What's more important, of course, is what you can actually uh, do with it. And the first thing that you might want to do with a simulation model is, of course, to simulate that model. And the easiest thing to do is to just plot it to run a simulation of this inverted pendulum model and then uh, plot something from the model and we can do this using the system model plot command and uh, in the, its easiest form we just say system model plot uh, we put either the typeset object or the name of the uh, type set of object and we get back some default plot from the model something that the model developer has said was the most important thing uh, to plot when you're starting out with this model in this case it seems like that is the uh, first a plot of the uh, angle of the pendulum uh, as an offset from the top uh, let's see if we like an offset from the uh, top pos the position like this. So what the controller wants to do is to have it standing straight up uh, at zero here. Um, and there's 
there also seems to be a uh, a reference position for the uh, cart. So the cart is continuously moving, and this plot shows that. Um, what you could also do, and this is um, this is true throughout this, instead of giving the um, the name of the um, instead of giving the typeset object or a symbol that has been assigned to the typeset object, what you could do is you could also give uh, the string that uh, um, that represents this model. So like that, just like the string we gave in the beginning to reference this uh, this model. And I think I misspelled it, pendulum. Um, something like that, um, if I don't misspell it, right? Uh, but we, of course, are not limited to uh, just plotting what, whatever, uh, whatever is uh, the model developer chose. Uh, you can also plot other things from the model. Now, I think in this case, there's only one uh, plot that has been stored uh, in the model, and that was the one we saw previously called angle and position. And I know this by using the plot names property like I did uh, previously. But to uh, do, but to show you how it works, what you can do is you can take, uh, you can do the system model plot. Come on, actually, let's do it up. Uh, let's do it up here. Uh, you can do the system model plot command, and then you can, as a second argument, what you could do is you can either reference a, uh, either reference a. Uh, plot, a plot name, like one of those from this list, which unfortunately is only one in this case, or you could reference a, um, you could reference a variable in the model, and I'll show you later how we can find those variables. But let's look at this uh, plot here, which is the same one as we saw previously, but Ooh, angle and plot is not right. It's an angle and position. Um, the same one as we saw previously, but what we're doing now is we're, instead of relying on what is the default plot in the model, we are actually telling the system model plot command what kind of plot we want to see. You might have noticed here that it pops up a window uh, that says, "Oh, it's not doing that anymore." That said, that it was uh, that it was compiling and it was simulating. Now, um, it's uh, that's because it takes this model, it um, makes it into highly efficient C code and then creates an executable from that, compiles it into an executable rather. And that, that's the step where we need a compiler. Now, uh, right now we only relied on the, uh, the default plot from the model. We only re relied on the actual values that have been set in the model, for example, a, a typical value could be the gear ratio of this gear, it could be the number of windings in the motor, the mass of the pendulum, the length of the pendulum rod, the different uh, different parameters of the uh, linear co quadratic controller, the, uh, uh, the matrix in there. Now, often what we want to do is not just rely on those default variables. We might want to change something up in the model. And we could, we can absolutely do this from the Wolfram language. And the way we do it is by first using the system model simulate command. And this works similar to the system model plot command that we saw that we saw up here, but instead of both simulating it and plotting um, 
and plotting the model, what it will do is it will just perform the first, uh, first step, which is then to simulate the model. Now, if I zoom out a bit here, I might get some nicer ah, line breaks, I thought. Let's not do that uh, like that. OK. Um, and the way this works is by, we call the system model simulate command. We reference the model that we want to simulate. And as a second argument, we can provide an association. So this is a Wolfram language association. And there's some different keys that we can give to this uh, association in order to influence what it is that we are simulating. Now, the first one of those is the initial values key. Uh, and as a value to that association key, we can give different, we can div, give different, uh, we can reference different para, uh, variable names in the model and then say what we want those uh, var variables to initialize as. So for example, say that we want to, to have the, uh, the pendulum start at zero degrees, that is straight up, uh, we can do that. And what we get back is a system model simulation data object. Now this system model simulation data object, we can send it to system model plot, which then will recognize that this is not a model, it's something that has already been simulated. And we could, for example, plot uh, the default plot by just doing like this, or we could, uh, actually let me show you. And then we, then we get the familiar plot. We could uh, plot a variable from the model. And here we already have a variable from the model. So let's use this one. And I'll give that string as the second argument. And now I get back a plot of the uh, of the uh, uh, the angle of the inverted pendulum. And then, of course, we could uh, change something up here. So we could say, like, okay, let's start at something that probably is going to go horribly wrong because it's too it's too off to decide if it's 45 degrees, so I don't think the controller will be able to stabilize it. And we can already get a hint here that it doesn't look all right with the, uh, with the inverted pendulum, with the snapshot that we get here of the, of the variable. So let's see, take a look at how that turned out. Oh, no. Uh, so if we do plot range all, we can see that we initialize that 45 degrees, it's too far off to the side, and the, um, the, uh, the pendulum tipped over and, uh, and landed at 180 degrees, which is pointing straight down, which is the other stable solution for the, well, the only stable solution for the for the inverted pendulum. So that's a fairly basic type of customization that you can do uh, for, your, uh, for your model. And one of the most basic ways that you, can, that you can analyze it. There is much more that you can do and each of these uh, are interacting with, uh, by using this, type of association. So let's go through some up to other keys that you can put in this association. And those are inputs and parameter values. Uh, so let's look at another type of model. In this model, we have something, the big blue, uh, blue triangle here uh, is called an input. And it's something that's it's under when you created this model, what goes into this is undefined. Uh, but we can define 
what goes in here at simulation time. So what happens then is, in this case, uh, we have an electrical circuit. We have a voltage signal that, uh, so the, the input defines what voltage is, uh, is over this circuit. Then it goes through some different uh, a resistor, some capacitor, and if you're familiar with electrical engineering, you might recognize that this is a low-pass filter circuit. And in essence, what happens is if you have something of high frequency here, the voltage that you get out in the other end will be uh, will have those um, uh, will have the high frequency um, components cut up, out. So it's only uh, letting the low frequency uh, components of that uh, signal pass through. So it's useful if you have, for example, a noisy radio communication signal or or another. And then we can try this model using some custom inputs and see how how it reacts. And in this case, we uh, define the name of the input that we want to set. In this case, I can hover over it and see that it's called VI. So I'll type in VI down here in my association. Uh, and then I can write any, uh, then I can write a uh, Wolfram language expression. So for example, I could do a time series. Let's, uh, uh, I will see what the, what the input looks like later. So here I'm doing, I'm saying that we want the input here to be a Wolfram language time series. And then we can use another key called parameter values to change different parameters in the model. So one in this case, one of the parameters that you might want to change is the capacitance of the capa capacitor 1, C1, and the capacitance of the capacitor 2, C2. So with that all set, and one thing I forgot to mention was that now between the first and the second argument uh, that we used previously, I nestled in some uh, a list here. It, this is just saying that uh, we wanted to start at time zero and we wanted to end at time four, uh, four seconds. Uh, and this is over bright, uh, so the model might have some more, uh, some of its own settings saying how long it should simulate for. By using this, we're overwriting that and saying, no, simulate for four seconds. And when we press enter, it will do, do just that. So uh, now we have the system model simulation data object again. Let's see if there's any stored plots here. System model plot take that. Oh, there wasn't any store plots I thought there was. Anyway, we can, uh, what we can do is we can uh, look at the v, the variable v in, um, which is the time series that we're, uh, that we are uh, submitting to this model. And we can also look at the output v o. So instead of just putting down one, variable. Now I'm giving a list of different variables that I want to plot. So VI, it's the uh, uh, it's the input signal that we get from this time series. And VO is what happens after it has been filtered. And now if we, for example, change any uh, any of the of the parameter values, I need to replace it. I think we'll get some, uh, we should get a bit of different uh, simulations. So now it's not uh, as, when I decrease this, it seems like it's not filtering uh, as high as it was doing previously because we have some sharp turns here on our output signal. Now this required me to know a bit about the model of the different uh, the different uh, variable names and so on. However, I kind of want to uh, see how 
uh, how, how can I find out about these different variable names? And we can ask our use system model again to find out new, uh, more properties from the, uh, from the model. One of those properties is the input variables. And here we can find in, all, in our model, what's the name of all the different undefined inputs. In this case, we only have the blue one here, VI. So if we ask for input variables, uh, we can get VI. Uh, another thing, how do I find out uh, parameter names? Well, there's, there's two types of parameters, you could say. Um, one that you put inside of the top level of the model, which means that uh, it's something that affects the entire model. And then each and every component has their own, uh, their own parameters. That you can uh, that you can change as well, but most of the time, uh, personally, I'm I'm mostly interested in the parameter names that are in the top level of the model. And what I could do though then is just like I asked for input variables, I ask for parameter names, but as I put a uh, I put it in a list. And as the second part of the list, what I can do is I can define a string, a Wolfram language string pattern. And I could say that I want everything that doesn't have a dot. And that's the reason because um, using Modelica terminology, if, if I want to access, for example, the resistance of this resistor two, what that would be called is an resistor two dot r, but now I don't want to. I want to discard or all of those parameter name uh, names. I only want the one at the top level. So I'll say, except uh, I'll take any character except dot, and I'll uh, I want one or more of them, and then I get back a list of uh, the different parameters that are in the top level of the model. So those that probably are the most important ones to change. Um, and as you can see here, we already have R, uh, R1, R2, which, which corresponds to this resistor one resistance, resistor two resistance. And that is because the, uh, the resistance inside of this resistor, it's set by, by this top level. Uh, parameter value, and that then is something that we can take that information. We can take that and go up here and say that we want to change the resistance as well. So we want to change R1. We want it to be I don't know, thou ten thousand. I'm not sure what's uh, what makes sense here. Uh, and yeah, okay. When I <laughs> do ten thousand, it doesn't look like there's any. Uh, voltage coming through my circuit. But anyway, I'm not an electrical engineer, so <laughs> yeah. Um, finally, uh, if we want to find some initial values to set or something that might be important to plot, we can ask for the system uh, variables um, property, just like the parameter names property. Uh, this will give us the variables uh, in the top level of the model using the string pattern. And in this case, the only, uh, the only one is our output. Um, but we could, for example, say then that, oh, we want the output to be, uh, to be zero in the beginning, or we might even set it to be, uh, probably not going to try this because I haven't haven't tried it before, but we could probably say something like we want the out the initial value of the output to be 104.7. Hmm. I kind of want to try this, but yeah, <laughs> I'll, uh, uh, I'll let you try this for your own. I think we can distribute this uh, notebook if you if you want to try any of this for your own. So um, just to remind you that all of this that I am showing here, it, it is available for 
Mathematica 11.3, even if you don't have a copy of System Modeler on, installed on your computer. Uh, right, so I'll just show some more things about uh, what this system, this simulation result uh, contains. Now, uh, I showed you what you could do using the built-in uh, built functions for plotting a simulation result. Uh, but there's so much more that you can do with this result object that get that you get back from the system model simulate command. Uh, I'll import a new model um, and I will simulate, and when I import this model, I should sh show you, oops, what I get back is a, a reference to a system model object. And I can put that straight into my system model simulate function import that model, uh, run from zero to 10. And let's take this in two steps instead. Uh, what you get back is then the system model simulation data object that I showed previously. Now you can do more with this system model simulation data object um, that then just use it in a system model plot. One of the things you, you, that you can do is you can ask for specific variables from uh, that model. In this case, I could go through the, pre the steps from the previous slide to find out uh, the name of um, the X and the Y uh, variables here, which are just, uh, oh, I should probably mention what kind of model this is. It's a ball that is bouncing on a 2D surface. And, uh, and the X and Y uh, variables here, they correspond to the X and Y positions of that ball. And I could say that I want to get back uh, some s simulation data. Uh, well, some, uh, what's the actual position trajectories from that ball? And what we get back is uh, is a uh, a piecewise function of different interpolating uh, functions that run through uh, from different times that describes where the ball is at any point in time. Now, since uh, system model is often used to represent uh, discontinuous systems. Uh, but these interpolating functions are mostly for continuous systems. It's uh, divided up into different uh, different intervals uh, in between which the, uh, the function is continuous. But at each of these intervals, intersections, you have a discontinuous, uh, discontinuous event. So you get a lot of these. Um, now, what we can do is we can uh, take these trajectories and put it in, for example, a parametric plot. And this makes sense because now we have the X and the Y uh, positions. Um, and so let's just look at this. Uh, and what we can do is then we can combine it with any other uh, Wolfram language object. For example, a plot of this is the this is the surface that the ball is in the model is bouncing on. And what we can do is we can combine the, those trajectories uh, with, that, with that plot. And this is what we get, which is how the ball is bouncing on that surface. Right, uh, so this was kind of a primer to uh, how system modeling works in the new uh, Mathematica 11.3 functionality. I hope that uh, you found this interesting and want to try this for yourself. I hope we find some way of uh, distributing this notebook out to you so you can get it hands-on and try it for yourself. I included some bonus uh, slides if you're interested in how to create uh, your own models, not using the uh, graphical interface, but using scripting 
in the Wolfram language. Uh, so just to recap, system modeling, it's a new functionality that came in Mathematica 11.3 that allows you to uh, design, uh, simulate and analyze systems from virtually any type of domain. And it provides a new, um, a new capability that we previously did not have with the uh, WSM link package. And additionally, it's available to uh, all uh, Wolfram language users. So uh, thank you for listening and I, uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, yes, thank you for listening.